Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on my channel I do anti-MLM videos and I also have a clothing reselling business on the Poshmark app and so I have a whole bunch of tips and tricks videos about Poshmark reselling, things like that as well. For over a year now I have been super consistent about posting a Poshmark video every single Saturday. I'm still doing that, that's still the plan. But for the past like month, month and a half, I've also been posting an anti-MLM video on Sundays as well. Today is Monday, I'm a day late and that's because I actually plan on posting a video every single day this week Monday through Friday now the reason for this is because this week I have more free time on my hands than usual and so I'm trying to like be productive with that time take advantage of that time and really just put out as much content as I can try and build my channel up a little bit and make my anti MLM playlist really bingeable I have a ton of Poshmark videos that's super bingeable right now but I really want to build up that anti MLM playlist as well so I have a lot of really fun videos planned for this week. We're gonna do some MLM top fails. I'm even planning on doing a video comparing Poshmark selling to MLMs and joining an MLM. I'm kind of like in this weird in-between phase where I have both of these topics on my channel. And so a lot of my subscribers have been like, I wanna see a comparison of these two things because they really overlap in some ways, but they're completely different in other ways. I think it is so fascinating. So anyway, tangent. I just wanna say thank you for your support as I'm kind of transitioning to kind of doing both of these things. Please make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I would love to have you here and stay tuned for kind of a crazy week with five new videos coming at you. For today's video, I had the original plan of doing like a normal top fails video reacting to clips and reels and photos of people from different MLM companies. I had listed out all the different things that I wanted to react to, but the past few days with the conclusion of Monations, which is Monate's annual convention that they just held last weekend, there have been so many things that I just have to talk about. Like there are so many things that are very, very concerning. So it's still gonna be kind of like a top fails video. We still have videos, we still have reels, we still have photos that we're gonna be reacting to, but it's kind of like a Monations theme. I thought that would kind of be fun. We're gonna talk about their new products. We're gonna talk about the fact that they're launching in Australia. We're gonna talk about the fact that they held a church service at their MLM conference. We're gonna talk about COVID updates and what I've seen as far as that. A whole lot to be reacting to. This is probably going to be a little bit longer of a video. I hope you're down for that. I hope you're excited because I I apologized in one video about having too much Monate content. And you know what? I don't apologize. They are easily my least favorite MLM. And I think it's because there's this whole added element of like this whole influencer culture. And like, if you're joining Monate, you're going to become an influencer and it's so flashy and attractive. And I feel like so many young people are getting sucked in. And with this conference, there is just too much problematic stuff to cover that I'm going to dedicate a whole video to it. And I'm not sorry. With with that reminder everybody that I'm going to include in this video their faces are going to be blurred their privacy is going to be protected none of the issues that I have with MLM companies come from the people involved it has everything to do with the business structure everything to do with the way that the money is made everything to do with the unethical and manipulative business practices and my emphasis is going to be on those things and the things that the people in the company are saying that are perpetuating this misleading information not necessarily the people themselves so please keep that in mind I am in total support of having open conversations in the comments of these videos about the different things that we are seeing and observing and reacting to. I do not support hateful comments directed at the people themselves. So please keep that in mind. Let's keep it classy. Let's stick to the facts and let's get into some truly truly cringeworthy content about Monations 2021. Okay, the first thing we're gonna be reacting to, we're gonna get it out of the way first because this is the most concerning thing that has come from Monate's conference this year. I said it in my previous MLM Top Fails video that with this conference, they were doing absolutely no patrolling of vaccine status, masking, negative COVID tests, nothing like that. Even though the convention was held in Atlanta, Georgia, where there is an indoor mask mandate in effect, Monate completely ignored it. They had not a care in the world, okay? So they were not enforcing it at all whatsoever. And what do you know, just yesterday, we have the first confirmed case of COVID to come from the convention. I apologize for the absolutely horrendous quality of this photo, but this Monate rep posted it on their story and then really quickly took it down. And so this is like a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot. So I'm really sorry that it's cropped super weird and terrible quality, but it says, I am indeed out with the Rona. It is not fun, but I know my body is strong. Thanks to 
Stepmom, I am doing isolated red light and ozone therapy with some nutritional IV drips to get this virus out of me quicker. I will be back to my normal self soon and that I am sure of. Thankful for family and friends support. I have so many amazing things I want to share, but my body just needs to rest right now. I, I, okay, like where do we even begin? I guess I'll start by making it clear that I wish illness upon nobody. That is not what I want. This is not about me wanting people who went to Monations to come down with the virus. That is absolutely not what I'm trying to say. What I am trying to say is that these are consequences we saw coming a mile away. This is 100% predictable and 100% preventable. And I just absolutely hate the fact that these MLM companies, and I'm talking about paparazzi as well, they had a super spreader event last month in Vegas. Savannah Marie has an excellent video about that. I think you should definitely go and check that out. It's way more detailed than I'm gonna get into right now. In my opinion, it's the blatant disrespect and inconsideration for the people that work for these companies. Paparazzi still held an event in a hot spot and didn't enforce masks, and now there are 12 people dead. Monate still goes ahead, hosts this massive event in a big city where there is a mask mandate, and they don't care. The way that it appears to me is the people at the top of these MLM companies, and I'm talking like the actual CEOs, not just the people at the top of the pyramid, but like the actual CEOs, the actual people in charge of holding these events, they do not care about the health and safety of the people in attendance. They only care about the money that that's gonna come from the ticket sales and they only care that people show up and that they buy the new product and that they buy the merch and that they take photos with the white Cadillac and that they sit there and that they listen to the million dollar earner speeches because that's good for business. It's not necessarily good for the people in the business, but it's good for business. This is the first kind of like self-reported case of actually coming down ill after the convention that I have seen, but I have also seen several other people posting very like vague things on their story, like talking about being being unbelievably exhausted, talking about being so tired that they can't function, talking about taking Monate's immune support to help them feel better. And it's like nobody's coming out and actually saying, hey, I think I might be sick, but I have to believe that this one person is not the only one. It just simply can't be. Not if you're doing a five day convention indoors with thousands of people who are not wearing masks. I also wanted to point out that I woke up to a comment this morning about how someone was like comparing these conventions to how celebrities are also holding super big events right now. And I'm assuming that that person was referring to the Met Gala that just happened. The key thing that I want to point out is that there is a right and wrong way to hold big events right now. If you were gonna be in attendance at the Met, you had to provide your vaccine record or you had to have a negative COVID test within 24 hours of the Met or you had to wear a mask at all times indoors. Okay, three tiers, three levels of preventative measures taken there that were not taken at these MLM conventions. It is possible to hold safe gatherings right now, but the problem is that the MLM companies just don't care. They're not requiring proof of vaccination status. They're not requiring proof of a negative COVID test. They're not requiring people to wear a mask. I just wanted to point that out because yes, there's concerts, there's festivals, there's the Met, there's sporting events, but all of those things have these multi-layer defense mechanisms against all of the people attending the event becoming sick. But I would venture to say that the MLM companies don't have those things in place because then it would deter people from coming and therefore they would make less money. So that's just my two cents on that. I wanted to talk about that right up front. And I also wanna say that I wish all of these people a full recovery. I'm sending all of the positive vibes for their full recovery, for their healing. I don't want anybody to be sick. I don't want anybody to God forbid die from this because being in an MLM is not worth your life. Going to a convention is not worth a human in life. Okay, moving on. A little bit more of a lighthearted note. We have a reel up next. This is from somebody at the very top of Monate, and at Monations, they released their damage repair product line. There's a shampoo, there's a leave-in conditioner, there's like a hair mask, and like a scalp treatment thing. So this is somebody at the very top of Monate who is showing us her before and after results of using the new damage repair line just one time. I have several issues here, probably like five issues we're gonna go through. If you were at the top of Monate and you have been using Monate's products religiously for several years, why would you need damage repair products? Why are you in the market for that? Okay, why does this before and after even exist? Why does your hair look like that before and why does it look like that after? Aren't you supposed to have like the best hair known to mankind all thanks to Monate products? Like, Why do you need something to repair the damage? I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. Like something weird is going on here. Issue number two, at the time of filming this video, these products have only been out for five days. And before this point, the narrative from Monate reps has always been that you 
need to be using the products for several months in order to reap the benefits of it, right? And now they're trying to tell us that all you need is one wash and a lifetime of hair damage will be repaired. Like, which one is it? Pick a side, because this is ridiculous. The narrative is constantly shifting and they will say whatever they have to say to pitch that product the best they can. In this instance, they have a new product out. They're trying to get you to buy it for the first time. So of course it's amazing and it repairs all of your damage after just one wash. Now, let's say a couple months down the road, you've gone through an entire bottle. You don't really see that much of a difference. You're like, yeah, I don't know. I'm probably not gonna repurchase. Now, all of a sudden, wait, wait, wait. It's because you need to be consistent. You need to keep using it. It takes a few months. Don't worry, just stick with it. You need to buy some more. And this just goes to show that everything is a lie, okay? Nothing is truthful. They will say and do whatever is necessary to get you to buy the product. Issue number three is that Monate loves to compare themselves to Olaplex, okay? They love to talk about how they are so much better and that they used Olaplex before, but now they're using Monate and their hair is like a million times nicer. Yet apparently, I don't know the truth, I can't really speak to this, but what I've been seeing is that apparently this new damage repair line is like completely ripping off the whole like hair bonding technology that Olaplex brought to the market. Now I will say that I don't know anything about ingredients. I don't know how Olaplex compares to this new money product. Okay, I'm not speaking on that, I do not know. I'm just saying that I think it's ironic that it's kind of swirling out there that Monate Huns will say that Monate fixed their hair in a way that Olaplex couldn't, yet now they're just copying and pasting Olaplex's technology and trying to sell it at an even higher price point. Just thought it was interesting, just thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, some food for thought. Issue number four is that Monate released this new line at the convention and then they immediately started selling it for a discount. They were selling the bundle of all four products for $90 instead of $178. Legitimate? reputable brands would never do this. If they had an amazing product, it would be flying off the shelves to retail customers and they would not have to discount it. But no, because they're an MLM and because the primary customer is the distributors themselves, they release it and they create all this hype and then they immediately put it on sale for a limited time and it creates this urgency, very intentional urgency, so that all of the reps flock to buy this product because it's shiny and it's brand new and they have to have it and they have to try it out so that they can promote it to their customers. I would die to see what percentage of the product sales of this new line went to the reps in the company versus actual retail customers. We will never know that information because it would not make money look very good. And the fifth and final issue that I have with this product line, I have a lot to say about it apparently. The Monate reps are really laying it on thick saying that this new product line is revolutionary and scientific. But I would like to point out that only the people on Monate's scientific advisory board are saying that it's wonderful. They are always going to say that it's wonderful because Monate is paying them to say that it's wonderful. According to Monate's agreement with the Florida Attorney General's office, they legally cannot say that their products are clinically proven because none of their product claims have been substantiated by any organization outside of the company itself. And I think that that's important to point out because at Monations, they had this group of people from the scientific advisory board and they're in these white lab coats. Maybe they were in white lab coats and I made that up. I don't, I can't remember. I was envisioning them in white lab coats, so official. But they had these people come on stage and talk about the science behind the products. And now the Huns, they're like total experts on it, right? It is so funny to watch them try and explain how these products work. They're like, it's bonding and sealing and it's a time release strategy. And the more you touch your hair, the better it works over a seven day period. Like what on earth? And I'm not saying that the products aren't formulated well. They very well could be. Okay, what do I know? I'm not an expert. I'm just saying that nobody from an unbiased standpoint has made the determination that these are in fact as good as Monate is saying they are. Okay, the next thing we're gonna be reacting to is a video from somebody in Monate, obviously, and she just got back from Monations. And for some backstory, Monate announced at the convention that they are going to be launching in Australia. It's also kind of funny because I kid you not, every single story that I've seen from people who went to the convention are like wearing the Monate gear that they bought. And I won't lie, these things are cute, okay? I would actually wear them if they didn't have like the Monate logo slapped all over them. I won't lie, it's cute stuff. But 
In my last video, I estimated that going to this convention was anywhere between like one and two thousand dollars. Okay, between flights, hotel, food, tickets to the convention, it's a lot of money. And I will say, I'm kind of proud. It's actually been confirmed. I've seen other people talk about how much they spent to go to Monations and it was right in between that one and two thousand dollar range. So I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I feel like that was a pretty good estimate. But I'm saying this to make a point that selling merch at Monations is just one more way that they're really trying to squeeze some money out of these girls that have already spent thousands of dollars to be there. The top she's wearing is $45. Y'all, it is still early over here. I've not even had my coffee yet and I am beaming right now. I am just I'm lit up from the inside because I just got off the phone with my first partner in Australia. She's coming on the second we launch in the market and I had this moment of thinking back to where I started and how I had no idea, no idea what this business was going to do for me. And I've seen it change my life and give me everything I wanted. And I've seen it change people on my team. I've seen it change their life and give them everything they've ever wanted. And it's cool because I get to have a front row seat to watch this do the same for her. I get to have a front row seat to see her have everything she ever wanted from this business. And I just, I'm, I'm having such a deep moment of gratitude over that this morning, that this is my work. I get to help people change their lives. And just, it's so different to be able to wake up and say that your work is inspiring confidence in people and helping people have beautiful hair and skin and feel better about themselves and give them a business opportunity that could legitimately make them millionaires. Like make them millionaires, really? Here's what's really sad is that people in MLM companies, they really truly believe that they are helping people and that they are changing people's lives. Like they really believe that inside. It's also so cringy to see how people in Monet are attributing all of their success, all of their happiness, all of their ability to live their dream life to a company. The devotion and unconditional support that people in Monet show for this company is slightly concerning, highly concerning actually. What I also don't understand is how people who are like mid to low on the compensation plan always promotes how Monate is like a life-changing income opportunity and how it makes millionaires. Like, are you a millionaire? Do you have a net worth of $1 million? Why are you telling people that they can be a millionaire if that's not even true for you? That's not even your reality. So why are you trying to tell other people that it can become theirs if they just follow in your footsteps? And I wanted to include this clip in the kind of like Monations recap video because she does talk about launching in Australia. And I will admit that I'm not like fully versed on what launching in another company really means because she's talking about bringing on a partner from another country, but I was kind of under the impression that there would be like people that start in Australia and then they build their tree of people also in Australia. So I'm kind of confused. If anybody can clear this up for me, I'm not sure how people in the United States are like getting people from another country on their team. That's kind of interesting to me. And what I also think is really perplexing is that if they're launching in another country, I guess I could see how the people that first join in that new country have a shot at being at the top of the pyramid. They have a shot at being at the top of the company and the top of the compensation plan and being in the million dollar club, which is not the same thing as being a millionaire. So it's weird to see people in the US promoting the business opportunity for people in another country that will never truly be the opportunity for this person here. Monate's already super saturated in the US. There really isn't an opportunity to be had. I don't even know if I'm making any sense at all. I guess what I'm trying to say is she's like, look at this person who's gonna join in Monet Australia and she really has a good shot at being in the million dollar club and being at the top of the company, which actually could be true for that person. But then she's over here and like that will never be her reality. She will never have the opportunity to be the first person in the country to like be a part of this company. I don't know, somebody give me some guidance on how this whole launching in a new country thing works. Clearly I have no idea and I'm just rambling. So let's continue. That kind of work, it hits differently. It hits differently when I'm not just waking up to make somebody else rich. I'm not waking up just to, you know, go clock in, clock out and have my work not really mean anything. Wait, 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 wait. You think by being in Monate, you are not working to make somebody else rich? How do you think the people at the top of your upline are making so much money? It's because they have you underneath them. It's because you are working to make them rich. This just like makes my head explode. 
If you want to say that people in the corporate world are only working to make the CEO rich, first of all, you would be very misinformed and you should probably look up how a corporate ladder works. But second of all, how would that be any different than what you are doing in your MLM? You are down here working to funnel money up to the top, up to your upline, making somebody else rich, while you yourself are not guaranteed any wages or any benefits as a result. That's why I'm, I'm gonna do this forever. I'm going to do this absolutely forever. I wanna see every single person that I come across have their life changed by me in some way. I wanna leave a legacy. I wanna give something to people. And this has been the ticket to be able to do everything I've ever wanted to do. And I'll stop being sappy now, but I'm just like, I'm so grateful for this and I'm so excited to see what's to come. Ugh, yikes, okay. Selling somebody false promises of living a dream life and making a million dollars from selling shampoo, that's not my idea of meaningful work. That would not be very fulfilling to me, but to each their own. Okay, the next thing we have to react to, I have a couple of pictures to show you that were posted on Instagram stories and they have to do with the fact that at Monations, they were already selling tickets to Monations 2022 for next year. So this picture says, who wants to come to this life-changing event next year with us people would pay thousands of dollars to receive the training we received this week you did pay thousands the original price of 249 dollars is already such a good deal for this type of training and tickets are on sale for only 99 dollars or 75 dollars if you buy 10 until september 14th at noon okay so they're offering these tickets for a limited time for a limited special price sounds familiar sounds like the damage repair line again to create the sense of urgency so that people will run out and they'll buy a ticket and they will commit themselves to going to next year's monations they're even offering this deeper discount if you book tickets in like lots of 10, which at first I thought was like a really weird discount to be offering, but when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense for Mon8. It's because they want people to go to their teams and be like, look, we can go as a team. Let's all pitch in. Let's buy it at the special rate. We'll all go. We'll buy 10 at a time. And so what's happening here is you not only have individual people purchasing the tickets and committing themselves to going next year, but now you have entire groups and teams of people committing themselves to go. I also saw this post which is claiming that they've already sold 22,000 tickets to next year's convention. Monation's 2022 tickets are non-refundable and they are non-transferable, which leads us right into our sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy describes our tendency to follow through on an endeavor if we have already invested the time, the effort, or the money into it, whether or not the current costs will outweigh the benefits. In other words, the Monate reps who bought their tickets an entire year in advance, they're going to feel obligated to stick it out and to stay with the company for at least that long because they've already invested this money. They've already Already purchased their ticket they can't get a refund and they can't give it to somebody else so they're gonna stay they're gonna get their money's worth they're gonna use it they might as well they already paid for it right so for example let's say that somebody bought a monations ticket for next year but by this time next year they're kind of like ready to be done with monate maybe they're not seeing the results they were hoping out of it they're kind of thinking it's time for me to go it's time for me to be done but then because they have this ticket and it's use it or lose it they're like okay fine I guess I'll go even though that decision to go is gonna cost them more money in the long run because now they also are committing to spending money on flights on hotel on food not to mention however many more months they've stuck it out with the company that they wouldn't necessarily have done if they didn't have this on the calendar it's the super vicious cycle where you commit yourself to going then you attend the convention and you are flooded and brainwashed for five days straight with toxic positivity and a whole bunch of like self-help and motivational crap and you leave and you're feeling so motivated and hopeful and excited for the future of the company and then they hit you with this sale oh buy a ticket for next year's convention and then you're roped into the whole thing again it is so so dangerous to get stuck in that cycle and it makes it unbelievably difficult to leave okay the next thing we're going to be talking about is the church-like event that was held at monations on the final day I'll flash a couple pictures and video clips on the screen as I'm talking about it. But the last day of the convention fell on a Sunday, and so that morning they held basically a church service. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I'm not a religious person. I wasn't raised that way. I never grew up going to church regularly. I would tag along with friends every now and then, but it wasn't like a massive part of my life or of my normal routine. In saying that, I want to make it clear that I will always support a person in whatever faith they hold and whatever religion they decide to follow. I will never, ever, ever judge a person based on on their faith or their spirituality. I just wanna show you these photos because from the perspective of somebody who's not religious, 
this is weird. Look, I am all for you going to church on Sunday or worshiping in your own way, but why on earth is this happening at a hair care company convention? You would never ever ever see this in a professional corporate convention that is meant to educate and train their employees. You just wouldn't, it would never happen. Religion, church, it would not hold any place in that kind of setting. And in these pictures, you see John Maxwell, who is like a self-help author that was hired to come and speak at the convention. And he's standing on the stage and everyone in the audience is holding up this book. And with a little bit of digging, I found out that the book was called What's Next? The Journey to Know God, Find Freedom, Discover Purpose, and Make a Difference by Chris Hodges. This is important and it's kind of disturbing because the way that it looks from these pictures is I see a man on stage and I see a whole bunch of people down below holding up books and praising the man on stage who seems to be talking about God's glory in the context of Monate and this business opportunity. And if that doesn't scream cult, I don't know what does. And again, going to church, worshiping God, not a bad thing. I'm just sitting here wondering why on earth Monate is holding this kind of session at their business conference, that's all. We already know that MLMs are cults as it is, but adding in this element of faith manipulation really seals the deal. And again, if you go to church, I'm not saying that you're in a cult, but when your faith is being manipulated and exploited to indoctrinate you into your MLM, that is a cult-like tactic. It's reinforcing this idea that like God wants you to be here and you are helping people and this is your purpose. You're doing the Lord's work and just have faith and all of the wealth and success and prosperity that you desire will be provided to you. And God is the one that's making all of the success in your business possible. This is incredibly problematic because when people are starting to feel like maybe this isn't all I thought it was, I'm not making the money I thought, it's not really bringing me all the wealth and success I thought I was gonna get and I kinda wanna get out. Now these people have this grip of faith around them too. They were told at the Monate convention that God wants them on this path and this is what God wants them to be doing. So now it makes it really hard to leave. And as I said, I'm not a religious person, but I can imagine that God doesn't want you to scam people. I can imagine he doesn't want you to exploit people's desire for a better life for your own financial gain. I bet God doesn't want 1% of people in the company to be making a livable wage while 99% of people in the company are suffering. It's just yet another manipulation tactic to get their grips on these people and to hold on to them using whatever they have to say, even if that comes to their faith and relationship with God, to get them to stay in the company as long as humanly possible. And I'm sure the people who attended this service see nothing wrong with it, right? They're uplifted, they're thankful, they're having so much gratitude for this wonderful weekend, they're all worshiping together. Okay, that's not an inherently bad thing, but you have to realize that the decision to include this in the company's convention, it is extremely intentional and it is only meant to increase your level of devotion to this company. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, that is all that I have for this video. There is so much to talk about that came out of this Monations convention. I'm going to continue keeping tabs on it. If there is enough stuff to talk about, I will be making a part two to this video. If you made it this far, thank you for sticking around and hanging out with me. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be posting a video every single day this week, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you, and I will see you in my next one real soon.